Hey, this is Maggie, and your host for Creative Inspirations, and today we have very special guest singer-songwriter David Hine here, so let's welcome David. Ooh. So David, please um, introduce yourself and kind of give us a brief uh, thing about what you do. Uh, I, I play music. <laughs> Hi, my name is David Heim, and uh, I'm a singer-songwriter in Toronto. I tour all over the place, and I play uh, acoustic rock and roll tunes. How long have you been singing and writing music? Well, since I was a kid, uh, I guess um, my my mom's family has always sung those like, very uh, folky uh, beginnings. So uh, their whole family sings and. I think a lot of the time uh, she encouraged me to sing to keep me busy for long car trips and stuff like that. But uh, I, I've been in bands since high school and uh, worked in a recording studio down in New York and uh, have really been pushing uh, being a musician since coming back to Toronto. Great. So at what point did you consider yourself a professional in the industry? Uh, I'm still not sure I do. You know, <laughs> I haven't been quite been paid enough. Um, uh, but you know, getting paid is part of it. Uh, really putting out a serious album uh, uh, with some serious musicians and a great producer on it helped a lot. Um, touring, uh, I, I toured across North America. That makes you feel more professional. So it's a it's a process. I'm getting there. So what's the formal training and background that you have? Uh, it's it's actually in art and, and writing a little bit. But uh, but I've taken some courses down in. Yeah. Mostly songwriting, a little bit of guitar, uh, but other than that, I'm self-taught. Oh, wow. Um, so what genre of uh, music do you think best describes what you do? I, you know, I, I'm always worried about uh, about calling and naming what genre I, I play. I, I generally call it sort of acoustic rock and roll, but but it covers, it covers a lot of stuff. So, uh, for example, I was playing out of Prince George. Uh, a little while ago in BC, and uh, the same show uh, got reviewed by a couple different places, and I got compared to the Bare Naked Ladies, I got compared to the Trues, and I got compared to John Denver. So the, you know, there's some radically different yeah. stuff there that people are drawing from my music. But I, I, I think acoustic rock. I, I, I'm similar to Blue Rodeo, Bare Naked Ladies, um, Jack Johnson, or John Mayer, people like that. Okay. So who are your greatest musical? Uh, I mean, some of the people that I just named, uh, you know, going through a big Jack Johnson phase right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, really, the people who really inspire me to write other stuff are, uh, are some of the musicians that I play with a lot. You know, if I play with someone who I think is better than me or writes better songs, that's what really pushes me. So there's some. There's local Toronto bands, um, uh, Flicker Show, uh, Boule, uh, Snoopy, or the James Clark Institute. They do some great stuff, and I love playing with them. So it, uh, that's what really gets me going. But uh, I grew up on Canadian music, so I grew up on Blue Rodeo and Spirit of the West. Uh, Ron Sexsmith is an amazing singer-songwriter, so people like that. So where do you get your inspiration from, like when you're writing your songs? Like, do you? come up with the lyrics first and then you kind of write the music after or vice versa? It's kind of, I mean, it, it really depends how I write the song. If I'm sitting at home with my guitar, uh, it tends to just flow out sort of together. Uh, sometimes I'll come up with the guitar part and I look for words or I just babble until I find words. Um, I write a lot of songs walking home uh, <laughs> from work, so, uh, and I think I developed that in New York. It's a uh, there's a lot of people that uh, harass you on the streets of New York, so if you're uh, if you're singing to yourself, they tend to leave you alone. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I started singing to myself, and I, I write a lot of songs on the street, just walking home, looking like a crazy person. Nice. So, um, which is your latest release CD? Is it this North of Nowhere? Yeah, I just put this out uh, in the fall, and. Uh, uh, it was uh, recorded by Juno Award-winning producer Joe Dunphy. Uh, it has uh, Jan Arden's drummer, uh, Ron Sexmas' guitar player, and uh, the bass player from Canadian Idol, which oh, nice. <laughs> some people some people like. <laughs> um, 
uh, but it's good. I'm, I'm really proud of the CD. It's, uh, I put a lot of money into it, I put a lot of time into it and energy, and uh, I'm really proud of it. What's the significance of the title? Like, how did you come up with that? Well, North of Nowhere was a band that I was in in university, and the band, uh, the band sort of went their separate ways when university ended. But, uh, but I still like the name, and, and to some degree coming back to Toronto a couple of years ago, and building my career up again in a new city, uh, the, it, it sort of felt like uh, starting from nothing or moving in one direction. A lot of my songs uh, are about traveling or, uh, or about moving from one state to another, from maybe from a relationship to another relationship or something like that. So uh, I wanted something that had to do with direction and uh, movement. But it also, uh, to me, it sort of represents uh, uh, just moving in any direction from nowhere, just starting out and going. Out. So, how have you evolved as a musician? I mean, you've been writing songs for, uh, for quite a few years now. How do you feel like from when you first started to, to how you are now? I mean, how do you feel you've evolved from that? Uh, when I first started singing, uh, I had a British accent. For some okay. reason. I don't know where. I, it's just you just whenever. thought it was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I thought it was cool subconsciously, but I, uh, you know, I'd start singing and then this weird British accent would come out, so definitely I've got rid of that. Um, I think I'm a lot more uh, open to different styles of music. Uh, you know, whatever comes out, I want to I wanna try it. So this album covers a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of rock, but it's also folk, ballads, a little bit of country in there, and uh, I'm a little bit less to, less afraid to explore those areas. Um, I'm a better guitar player, I'm a better singer, I get better every yeah. day. So how about you give us some, like, some stories when you were on tour, anything interesting happen or...? Yeah, I had a really interesting <laughs> tour, oh, uh, a lot of stuff happened. My favorite story is in, uh, in South Dakota, uh, which, is, which is sort of where I'm from originally. Uh, I was couch surfing uh, across the states, and couch surfing is this website where you, uh, you you basically send an email out to a bunch of people in South Dakota and say, "I'm a touring musician. Can I can I stay with you there?" So I was staying at this guy's house, and uh, he left for work in the morning, and I woke up to gunfire. And I'm, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It's a farmhouse, yeah. and uh, and I go upstairs and. Uh, and I don't want to go outside. I'm, you know, I've lived in New York. You don't go outside when there's gunfire. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I eventually went out to see what was happening, and they were uh, uh, they were firing guns. Uh, they they were doing hunting practice, right? So they had all their rifles out oh, and okay. pistols, and uh, and I, I'm a city kid. I've never done this before. So they uh, they invited me over, uh, and and they offered to let me fire. Uh, the gun, so I shot an AK-47 and a Glock pistol, and it was the weirdest way I have ever woken up. <laughs> it was very strange. In Thunder Bay, I shared a room with an iguana that was uh, about <laughs> this big. Her name was Susan, and she yeah. licked me. Nice. And, uh, More than just licked you. <laughs> she, just licked. she liked me a lot, but yeah. she stayed on her side of the room. She was a good roommate. Yeah. Um, uh, I got some good fans along the road. Uh, in Moose Jaw, uh, yeah. these uh, these seven drunken guys who work on the train, the, the railways, mm -hmm. uh, they they all got in. They were they had come in for a drink and they loved my stuff and they started uh, singing along. They were singing along to all these songs. They they didn't know the songs but they were singing along to them anyway. And uh, and then later, uh, uh, one of them showed up in Edmonton and another person showed up in Vancouver. So they sort of followed me along on the on the rail line, so it was, it was cool. Yeah, so if you could collaborate with another musician, whether he's alive or deceased, who would it be and why? Um, what's your most embarrassing moment, either performing or maybe something really weird that a fan did, like did they jump on stage or...? I was playing, uh, we did a show at Healy's here in Toronto. And uh, and it was it was a pretty good show. We were, we were you know we were fine. I was playing with my band. Yeah. And uh, near the end of the set, these uh, I think four girls, incredibly drunk, uh, uh, were started dancing right in front of us. And uh, and the entire time they kept making little like 
heart <laughs> shapes at me and uh, uh, blowing kisses. At blowing you. kisses, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and like mouthing. You know? <laughs> and uh, this is rare for me, so it, yeah. it totally threw me off uh, playing at the. Uh, and then afterwards they destroyed my mailing list. I've got a book that I pass around and it's just hearts everywhere, their phone number written on, they just massacred the thing. And then they wanted hugs after it was very strange. Uh, it was after New Year's, uh, we'd all celebrated and the band was just playing and having fun. And some sort of softcore porn show came on, on and suddenly the entire band just stopped what we were doing. <laughs> and the entire audience was like, what's going on? And we were just like, mesmerized by <laughs> what was happening. What are some of your biggest struggles so far? I mean, like being a musician, it's a really tough industry, you know. It's hard to make a living uh, doing this. You know, every day you try to sell as many CDs as you can. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, uh, I work with friends, uh, but without a label, without support behind you, uh, you're doing all of your website stuff, you're booking all of your own tours, you're setting up everything. I do all of my graphic design. so. It's a lot of work, um, and I think that's one of the challenges. My uh, my wife is an actress, so uh, she works late at night, and I work late at night, so we uh, we hang out at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, so I guess you have to work like another job. So I, I, I work during the day as a, a graphic designer and writer, and uh, it actually it, it it helps a fair bit. Of, you know, uh, my graphic design skills of certainly sort of amped up by working there and I design my album cover, I design my posters and uh, yeah. I save a lot of money there. <laughs> so how about you list some of the awards or accomplishments or some of the biggest things that you've achieved so far in your career? Uh, the band was in a big battle, the bands uh, called Emergenza, uh, which to some degree is a uh, who can bring the biggest audience out. Uh, thing, but uh, but it was actually pretty good. We made it to the Canadian finals and played for 1,600 people. Uh, so that was a that was a nice high point. Um, I've won the International House uh, Songwriting Award. Uh, I've been a finalist in a bunch of other ones, uh, chart magazines, indie startup award, and uh, things like that. Um, I'm really proud this year. Uh, I'm playing in some uh, festivals, some music festivals, uh, for the first time this summer, and that's. Uh, that's a big accomplishment yeah. for me, uh, getting on those stages. So I'll be playing out in Manitoba in July for the Brandon Folk Festival. And then... Uh, I'm Got featured in the magazine. Yeah, recently I was in uh, Canadian <laughs> Business Magazine. Uh, who knew? Uh, but I'm in an article on uh, how to take time off work, <laughs> which... Uh, uh, which everyone, uh, it's funny, everyone at work is really excited about it. They're yes. like, wow, you're in Canadian Business Magazine. And I'm, you know, that's what they're excited about. But uh, I also think it's kind of ironic that it's about getting out of work. <laughs> yeah. They're very excited about it. Awesome. Um, so what do you hope to achieve in the near future? I've got a lot of plans. Uh, we're going to start doing some videos. Uh, I'm doing a, a chapters tour. So I'm doing, I'll be playing the chapters all around Toronto and, uh, and all around Ontario. Let's take a look at your website, the one that you designed. <laughs> what else can I show you? Uh, there's a blog on here, um, which, uh, which has sort of, uh, basically every show I do, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a story behind it. So uh, anyone yeah. who comes out gets a paragraph written about them. Uh, there's shows, there's uh, information about me, biographies. Uh, you can buy my music. You can listen to my songs uh, yeah. for free. Um, and there's a couple albums up there. Uh, there's some photos that you can see, take a look at. Yeah. Uh, and David also has a MySpace uh, site. So it's myspace.com slash David Hine. So you can also get a sample of some of his music and you can write to him. You also have a blog on there as well. Yeah. yeah. So. And if you're on MySpace, uh, add me as a friend. We'll, uh, we'll hang out. Yes. <laughs> With your CD, I mean, can you only get it through your website, or is it available anywhere else? It's available all over the place. Uh, it's on it's on my website, which is probably the cheapest way, way to get, to get the best, it. <laughs> the best way to get it for me, anyway. Uh, yeah. It's available on Indie Pool, uh, uh, iTunes, 
uh, Pure Tracks, uh, basically any, any if, if you want to download it to your iPod, you can download it at almost any site. Uh, you can order it through HMV, and uh, it uh, it'll be available at Chapters through consignment while I'm playing there. So. Oh, nice. yeah. Be sure to check out David Hyen at some of his uh, upcoming performances. So we do have a surprise from him because he is going to perform live for us. So uh, uh, this song is called Seventeen. This is off the album. Uh, this is about when I was 17 years old, a couple years ago. Uh, and uh, I met this beautiful 28-year-old woman uh, who uh, uh, totally knew what she wanted from a relationship and from me, and uh, I had no idea what I wanted, but uh, uh, this is in praise of older women. setting up and unpacking and uh, 
and we, we needed to get out of there. We were just going crazy. So we, uh, we left and went and sat on the porch and we looked down the street and we realized there was this, uh, this music festival going on all up and down the street and uh, we hadn't heard about it. And so we went out at night and we just wandered along the street and it was just this, uh, this beautiful night and uh, it just reminded me to not, to, uh, not to close myself off. Took the night off, looked around, and left this mess behind. Locked the door and got it off our minds. You wore that necklace like I hadn't seen you wear in years. You looked like we were twenty, and it's still from me. And I don't know why. I've Support independent music. Uh, buy this CD on that website with your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be sure to check him out if you like what you heard. Uh, www.davidhine.net um, or you can check him out on www.myspace.com slash davidhine. And this is Maggie Ng for uh, Toronto TV Live, Creative Inspiration. Hope to see you next week. See you.